So good morning, welcome to this another series lecture about electrical wiring simulator or EWS. Today we're going to perform the second activity under the motors module or the three-phase induction motor which is uh, entitled holding inductor motor. Okay, so in this particular circuit we will just be adding a holding contact. Okay, so let's click play and then normal. And then let's explain first the functionality of our uh, circuit here. Again, uh, this electrical diagram can be divided into two parts. This portion here is the control circuit, which is responsible for controlling the operation of our load. So in this particular case here, our load is a three-phase induction motor. And then this one is the control circuit. This one is the power circuit, which is the load side of our electrical diagram here. So as what we have uh, mentioned in the previous lectures, so this one here, the normally open contact connected in parallel with your push button number two is our holding uh, contact, is the our holding circuit, okay? So how does it work? So when you start the circuit breaker, the current will not be able to flow through this line here because this one is uh, open. However, if we click this one and hold, it will, the current will now be able to flow through this push button here, hold and then press. So the current will flow through the coil of the contactor number one, hence this will become energized. Okay, going back, so energized. So as what we've told in the contactors module, if this uh, coil is energized, all the normally open contacts will be closed. So in this particular case here, this one will close. Okay, so if this one will close, so there are two paths now for the current to flow. You can flow through here and you can also flow through here. So even if you release your uh, finger in this push button here, the current can still able to flow through this line here. Hence, it will retain its state, which is in energized state. So at the same time, if this is in energized state, this uh, main contacts here, the normally open main contacts here will uh, close. So if this will close, the current can now flow through this line here, through this line here, going to the induction motor, which will in return turn on this uh, motor. Now, if we want to stop the rotation of the motor, we have to interrupt the current which is flowing right here, right in that line. So we have to press this push button number one. So this one is the stop button. If we click this one, it will create an open line here. Hence, it will disallow the current to flow through the KM1. So if there is no current supplying to this KM1, it will become de-energized. If this one is de-energized, this one will return to its open state and this one will return to its open state. Hence, if this is open, the current will not be able to flow through the induction motor, stopping this motor here. Okay, so as simple as that. Okay, so now we, we can wire this one similar to what we did in the previous lecture from this line two first to this uh, circuit breaker and then to the fuse, okay? So line two of the circuit breaker to the fuse, okay? And then from the fuse, we can go it back, uh, we can connect the output of the fuse to the input or the input of the PB1, the stop button, okay? So what is this line here? Let's undo, undo, there's some line here. So again, Okay, connect this one. Oops. Okay, and then output to the input of the uh, push button one. Okay, and then you push button number one at then. Okay, push button number one, the output of the push button number one connected to the input of the PB number two. Okay, so the output is connected to the input of the push button number two and then the output of the push button number two connected to the input of or the a1 of the km1 okay a1 of the km1 so which is uh, here okay so we can connect it like that a1 and then the a2 the a2 of the km1 will be connected go back to the fuse one okay oops Okay, we can do it like that. Mm -hmm. Fuse one. Okay, and then from the fuse going back to the breaker. Okay, so we're done with the first level. 
now we have to connect the holding contact. So this is the 13 and 14. Take note, guys, from our previous lecture, this portion of our magnetic contactor are called uh, auxiliary contacts. Okay, so these auxiliary contacts are normally used for the control circuit. So that is why when we need a normally open contact to be connected, to be served as our holding circuit, we will be connecting here. Okay, and then and then this uh, big normally open contacts here are the main contacts. So this one auxiliary, and then this one are the main contacts here. Okay, this one here. Okay, so we need a normally open open uh, contact. So this thirteen connect it in parallel with your uh, push button. So the input of the PB two. Okay, so the thirteen. Input of the PB2, so the, oops, so the 13 is, the 13 is, this is the 21, 21, so this one here is the 13. So, we can zoom out, and then input, okay, we can go around through this line here, okay, connect it to the input of the push button and then at the same time the 14 as what we can see in our uh, diagram here the 14 is connected to the output of the push button the 14 is connected to the output of the push button 14 should be around here okay this one is the 14 output of the push button number two okay so we can do it this way output of push button number two okay so i think we're done with our control circuit now let's proceed with the uh, power circuit so circuit breaker circuit breaker circuit breaker to the input of our holding contact okay so only the circuit breaker connected to this one okay that one to this one and that one to that one Okay, and then from our, this one from our holding contact, uh, from our contactor to the thermal overload relay, which is around here, thermal overload relay, thermal overload relay. Okay, so you just have to connect it, thermal overload, thermal overload, and then thermal, oops, and then thermal overload and then after the thermal overload we connect it to our induction motor which is right here so we can directly connect it from here and here okay so i think we got the correct wiring to check Okay, wait for a while. So to check, we click the submit button. Okay, what we correct, 17 out of 17 wires. So what we expect here, if we press this push button here, okay, so we can see this RPM moving. Okay, even if we release our hand with this or finger with this push button number two, the motor should keep running. It will only stop when we press this push button or this stop button here. Okay, so let's try. Click and hold. So the motor is running, so in your end, you should be able to hear, mm, okay, so visually we can see that the motor is running, 1,763 RPM, okay, so release my finger here, so the motor is still running at the 1,763 RPM, okay, so if we want to stop the operation of this motor, we have to click this push button number one here, click, and then the motor stops at zero rpm click again and then and then release motor is running stop the motor okay so see you in the next lecture